Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will talk about a few important interview questions of Splunk. Okay, so I will try and cover up cover a few questions. Apart from this, there are uh, uh, more many questions also. I will I will be sharing uh, all of them in my future videos. To start with, the first question is: Can you change the default port on which Splunk component runs? If yes, how? So you can say yes, we can change that. How do you change that is go to uh, Splunk, log in to Splunk as a admin user and click on settings and then go to server settings, central settings and change uh, value for either management port or web port and click save. Then uh, alternatively, you can also go to bin folder and run the following command Splunk set web, web port, new port number you have to give. So this is how you can do that. Next question, have you worked on heavy forwarders? What's the importance of it? What are the important configuration files you have on heavy forwarders? Answer would be heavy forwarders are used for data, pre -proce data pre-processing, meaning it is used for a selective data forwarding and removing unwanted values as well. These are the important configurations of uh, heavy forwarders. When you open transforms.conf file, the config parameters which are configurable dest.key regex format. All right. The next question: uh, Have you uh, onboarded syslog data? Can you explain that? You can say uh, uh, you know you can say yes. I have onboarded the uh, syslog data uh, using the unencrypted syslog service and the universal forwarder. Alternatively, we can also uh, use demand process like uh, collect d and stats d to transit data using udp okay that will answer your question next question uh, why is source type and source definition so important source type is used as a data classifier whereas source contains the exact path from where the data needs to be onboarded these two source and source type we just have to talk about the importance of these two uh, you know Splunk instances all right the next question um, what is a license master very important question uh, I, I can say that uh, in every interview you will ask question about license the licensing all right so what is a license master how does the licensing of Splunk work uh, how how do you create license master and license pool the answer is license master is a Splunk instance which is used for monitoring Splunk data volume on a daily basis data volume on a daily basis this is how we configure a license master log into any particular index go to settings under settings you have licensing add licensing file it you will have mainly an xml based licensing file it should be added you can just give uh, this kind of answer for this uh, licensing part if you asked uh, any question by an interviewer now next question is what is props and transforms.conf how do you uh, write stanzas and relate them? Props and dot coms is very very important. We have a couple of uh, 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 you know configuration files. So uh, these two are uh, we have like props dot com, transforms dot com, outputs dot com, index dot com, server dot com. All these files. But uh, you can expect majority uh, you know interviews will be asked props dot com and transforms dot com. All right. So props dot com is a configuration file used for a selective indexing mainly used for data pre-processing we need to mention the source name in the props.conf but transforms.conf is specifying what all set of events parameters fields needs to be excluded for example you have a dest.key again uh, regex format so you can just answer like this the next question how will you troubleshoot splunk performance issue or error uh, look through the splunk log uh, splunk d dot log for diagnostics and the error metrics we can also go to monitoring console app and check for the resource utilization of a different server components like you have cpu monitor utilization cpu uh, monitor utilization etc we can also install splunk on splunk app from splunkbase.com and monitor health of a different Splunk instances there you go next question uh, what is a summary index uh, how do you create accelerated reports 
is licensing cost applicable on summary index the answer for this is uh, summary index uh, contains summarized or brief data as the name itself says you can say that summary index contains a summarized or a brief data we can create accelerated reports by uh, uh, enabling accelerate reports option all right uh, kindly remember that a report acceleration should only be done on data coming from summary index not on the data coming from the application or a main index and uh, summary index doesn't counts on licensing part if, if they ask you is the uh, licensing part covered in summary index you can say no okay summary index doesn't count on a licensing part all right uh, the next question yeah. Uh, name some default Splunk indexes and their uses. This is one more very important question. We have um, you know few default indexes. Uh, you can say main audit, source, uh, main audit, internal and uh, uh, introspection. This uh, these are the uses of all. Main contains all system related data while adding monitor using command uh, Splunk add monitor. You know source file name. If we don't mention any index name, the data will be automatically go to the index. Okay, next is audit. All such related information, you know, schedule searches as well, uh, ad hoc searches will be uh, in the audit. Now uh, you have one more, uh, you know, default indexing which is which is introspection. This is uh, related to all related to all system wide, uh, you know, system wide data, including memory and CPU data, uh, etc. And the final one is internal. This consists of error specific data, for example, database connectivity uh, hampered, etc. All right. So you can just mainly you can just name all these uh, default indexes. If they ask you to explain, you can talk about all this. Next question. What is the file precedence Splunk follows? Could you please explain? This is also one more very, very important question. You know, um, majority of the interviews you expect this question. What is file, talk about file precedence of Splunk. You can say that uh, systems local directly, highest performance, then uh, apps local directly, then again, apps default directly, system default directly will be the lowest, uh, lowest one which Splunk follows. All right, what is the dispatch directory for? Okay, dispatch directory. Whatever the searches you run on search head, uh, it will store in the backend and dispatch directory by default. Okay, it will delete twice of the scheduled time of the scheduled saved searches and ad hoc searches for every 10 minutes. All right. The next question: Explain different roles and their uh, capacities in Splunk. We have uh, mainly to talk about user and the power user admin. User can only read the Splunk artifacts. For example, reports, dashboards, alerts, and so on. But you don't have the edit permission. Remember it. Now the power user can create dashboards, alerts, reports, and he will have the edit access as well. Whereas admin have access to all the production servers, can do server restarts like you know care of maintain, take care of maintenance uh, activities, and so on. Power user and you know normal user roles are. Uh, subsets of admin role okay so these are the main three roles that we can talk about in you know uh, splunk what is lookup one more important question very very important question uh, what is splunk how it is useful uh, sorry what is lookup how it is useful and used in splunk lookup is a knowledge object in splunk okay within our spl code if we need to uh, reference to an external uh, file we can do that using lookup lookup files can be added uh, you know to splunk by going to settings lookups and add lookup file lookups are useful also from the perspective of performing several types of joints like inner outer etc okay so you can also say that uh, like uh, lookups are we use lookups to get the internal source fields from external database you can just have one word one line answers if you want to give one line answer you can just say this we use we use lookups to get the internal source fields from the external database okay there you go the next question is explain how transform commands in SPL explain few transform transform commands in SPL you can talk about you can just tell them stars charts time chart rare 
you know top etc okay just you can name them uh, name couple of uh, uh, you know commands in sql as they're just looking uh, to answer only the names of these commands if they want to explain in detail so you can you know uh, take them in detail we will talk about it in the next videos now the licensing warning in case the daily uh, license limit is you know uh, uh, crossed or exhausted there will be uh, a warning coming on search head that uh, you are exceeded daily license volume and you either need to uh, upgrade your license or stop uh, ingesting uh, ingesting data okay each and every user authenticated to splunk has limited uh, search quota normal user have uh, around 25 mb whereas power user has around uh, 50 to 125 mb once this threshold is exceed, uh, exceeded for the particular time user searches will stop getting queued okay once it is exceeded uh, maybe you will you will be able to uh, index the data but your search will be blocked what are the queues we have in splunk queues and pipelines you have input queue parsing queue merging queue typing queue you know indexing queue and null queue the next question what is a data models and pivot data models are uh, you know uh, hierarchical uh, representation of uh, representation of the data it shows the data uh, it it, uh, it shows the data in a more structured and organized format pivot tables are a subset of a data model it is an it is an interface where users can create reports okay uh, create reports alerts uh, without much involvement of spl language that is a, a huge benefit of this uh, data models and pivots next question would be uh, how to onboard only JSON files in props.com we need to use uh, below attribute okay indexed underscore extraction equal to JSON uh, truncate equal to thousand okay so uh, these are uh, the you know few important questions I am sharing I thought of sharing with you okay there are a few more uh, you know there are a lot of questions in fact I will be uh, sharing all of them in my future videos thank you for watching